Welcome back to the Hill Update. I'm your host, Dean Allison. Lots going on in Ottawa this week. And here to help us understand what is happening is Richard Bragdon. Richard was first elected in 2019 and then re-elected in 2021 for the riding of Quebec Mactaquac with over 51% of the vote. Welcome. Hi, Dean. Great to be with you again. Listen, I know you've had to juggle bad weather, rescheduled flights and canceled <laughs> flights. So really, thanks for joining us on the shows. That's one of the things that most Canadians don't get to see during the winter when the weather goes bad. Some people don't actually make it home, do they? That's right. You could get stuck there. And look, I'll tell you what, uh, I, as much as I don't mind going to Ottawa to do what needs done, I love coming back home. There's a lot more common sense back here in Tobik back to quack than there is in Ottawa. No kidding. So it's good, good to be back. And uh Glad I could get home for sure. So listen, let's uh, let's show a video of uh, the leader in the house just talking about uh, some of the issues around GC strategies and the Arrive Can app. Then let's let's talk a bit about that. Yeah. The Prime Minister's Arrive scam is now flailing out of control. Today, revelations from a Joël Denis Bellevance that one Arrive Scan company received a quarter of a billion dollars in contracts. Let's get this straight. It's a company with four employees headquartered in the basement of a tiny cottage. They got IT contracts even though they admit they do no IT wow. work. A quarter of a billion dollars? W-T-F. Yeah. Here, here. Okay, so he, he's talking about a, a company called GC Strategies that has gotten contracts of over a quarter of a billion dollars. We'll talk about that a bit more in the second segment that we have together. But let's talk a bit about the $60 million for the actual Arrive Can app that was only supposed to cost 80,000. Now this company got $20 million for it, even though they thought that the cost was gonna be around 54 million. We realize now that cost is closer to 60 million and the Auditor General had a whole bunch of other things to say. Just love to get some of your takes on that. Again, this is such an unbelievable waste of taxpayers' money. Uh, the fact that they went to this type of program, which, again, I don't think any Canadians were asking for or wanting or demanding. And then once they put the application on people's phones and required them to have it on their phones for travel purposes, there were glitches, there were problems, there were frustrations. And in my writing in particular, uh, Dean, I have seen so many, uh, we saw so many people reach out to our offices with great frustration. So many who were struggling with the app to get it downloaded properly, or they would get to the border and something wasn't working and filled it out. And it was glitchy. It was uh, cumbersome. And it led to a lot of frustration. And then to think that it costs that much more than what it should have ever cost to develop let alone how useless it was in actual application. And a lot of Canadians had concerns about the fact, why do we need this? And why would we ever spend that kind of money on something that had no real practical use and didn't do us any good? It was it was, it was was complete colossal disgrace. And furthermore, the waste of taxpayers' funds is shocking. Because I understand, Dean, and maybe you know this more than I do, my understanding is, is that this program from some believe they could have developed it for like $80,000, that type of program oh, from absolutely. those who have expertise in that field to think that we're at 60 million or $80 million. Like this is insane. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about the sec, what the auditor general had to say, but just very quickly, I mean, you live on the, your riding borders, Maine. I'm yeah. from Niagara. We border the, you know, New York state. What did this absolutely. do for tourism and some of these other things? This must've been uh, difficult because once again, Americans wouldn't even know they were required to have this app. So I'm guessing, Many people were turned away at the border. You talked about that confusion just within your own riding, people being having a quarantine that maybe didn't need to have to because of the app. What did this do for tourism and a number of other those things in your riding during this time? Again, it, it was hurtful. I mean, anything, any barrier at a time when our economy was so vulnerable because of the shutdowns we've been through and the lockdowns, then when you were trying to get people mobile again and they were starting to get up and going, to add another weight and a cumbersome responsibility and more confusion at a time when the population was stressed enough as it is. And then the Americans, they certainly weren't interested in, in putting these apps on their phones to come visit. So it hurt our tourism sector for sure. It hurt our business sector. It hurt even those who wanted to go visit family and be with family. It was discouraging for them because being in a border riding, we have people that have family members on both sides. And in, in parts of my riding, which are rural and remote, 
there's not as much cell reception and it would glitch in and out. It was just a frustration after, and we had a lot of calls come in during that time. And again, just points again to something that was so impractical. It was not needed. No one was requesting this. People were not, oh, please get us an app so we can get on our phones and, and use that to travel. This was an overreach of government. Hold on one sec. Let's go to break and we're going to come back and keep talking about this.